Oh, I gotta find God to remind us. Forget what conference room he was in. Oh, he's not there. What comfort? Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hi, Dr. Romano. I'm glad I found you again. I've been studying. I was just wondering, do you have a study guide I can use? Why don't we forget a study guide and try to learn the material since there's no silver bullet? Um, I got a great problem that I made for my study group, so let's get right down to it. Okay, Dr. Romano. Is this a shortcut I can use? There's no shortcuts. Let's learn the material. If you can see here, I have what's called a sequence where we're going to take one compound and we're going to do a lot of different things to it. The first part of this reaction is easy enough. It's a halogenation of a benzene ring, and all we're going to do is we put on a bromine. The FeBr3 is the Lewis acid catalyst. So letter A gives me bromobenzene. It's easy enough. Now it gets a little tougher. Normally, an aryl halide is unreactive in things like SN2 or SN1, but this is neither an SN2 nor an SN1. Whenever you have CH3 or an R group with CULI, it's known as the Corey House reaction. And what that does, it replaces the um, bromine in this case and puts one R group on. The other R group goes off as byproduct. So that converts bromobenzene into toluene. So A and B, I think you can get there pretty easy. Now, from B to C, that's known as side chain oxidation. Anything made of carbon normally will get blown off the ring, whether it's an ethyl or a methyl or a propyl, and we oxidize it into benzoic acid. C to D is still easy. All we're going to do is we're going to replace the OH with a chlorine from the SOCl2, and that gives me benzoyl chloride. Now, once the ACL halide is made, we react it with ammonia, we split off HCl, and that gives me benzamide, which is letter E. I got you through A, B, C, D with ease. Now it gets a little tougher. And if you're going for some big numbers on the dot, these are two must-have reactions. Bromine base and aqueous medium. This is known as the Hoffman rearrangement. And as you can see what's going to happen, we remove the CO, it's going to end up leaving a CO2, and we have a decarboxylation. So we end up with aniline, which is letter F. That's a tough one. We go back to letter E for a minute, we go back to benzamide, and we're going to reduce it. We reduce it either with H2 and platinum, lithium aluminum hydride, and ether and water. And as you guys can see, it gives me benzyl amine. So it's almost as if the C double bond O is made into a CH2, almost as if you were doing a Clemenson or a Wolf Kishner type of reaction. All these are very, very important and fair game problems for the debt. For you to be able to get that 25 or better, you've got to be able to think in sequence. I hope that gives you a really good idea on how to go about a sequence reaction. I'll be doing a lot more types of questions like this in the study group, and up ahead, I'll be making a lot more video clips. This should be a must-have sequence reaction in your toolkit. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, any further thing I can do for you? Well, um... Yeah, Dr. Romano, you know where a Starbucks is here? I need I some help. I care less about a Starbucks, so I'm going to leave that for you to find, and I wish you a good day. Okay, Dr. Romano. Good day to you, sir. Good day. Cheese.